Hi friends, it's Dana here. It is President's Day and I thought I would read you a story about a president's life and since I already did George Washington for the 4th of July, Independence Day, uh, I thought I would read you about Abraham Lincoln because, you know, he's probably the most famous president after George Washington. Let's find out why he's so famous in this book called I Am Abraham Lincoln. It is by Brad Metzler and illustrated by Christopher Iliopoulos. Here we go. I am Abraham Lincoln. When I was little, even young boys were expected to work on the farm and hunt animals for food. Are you coming? I'll catch up with you later. I prefer to read. I also loved animals. When I was 10 years old, I saw a group of boys playing with some turtles. They found turtles? I love turtles. Look, it's making the turtle run fast. It's the fastest turtle ever. But as I got closer, I realized they weren't playing. They were taking hot coals and putting them on top of the turtles to see what would happen. To them, it was harmless fun. In that moment, I could have just walked away. When you're 10 years old, it's hard to do the right thing, but someone has to. Let this turtle go. What did you say? You heard me. Let it go. Those boys let the turtle go. Soon after, I wrote one of my first essays about hurting animals is wrong. That may not seem like a big deal, but back then, most kids and even adults didn't know how to write. In fact, the state of Indiana was so new, schools weren't even built yet. I went to school for barely a year total, but that didn't stop me. Using chalk, I practiced writing the alphabet on trees. I even wrote in the dirt of the cornfield. Abe, how's the corn coming? Great, Dad. When it came to learning, my best teachers were simply books. I loved books so much, I once walked six miles. I'm serious, six miles to get one. Six miles? That's too far for a book. Not for this one. I'd read while my horse was resting and while waiting in the line at the local store and in one of my favorite positions with my feet up on a tree. Before long, I had read every book in the neighborhood from the Bible to Aesop's fables to Robinson Crusoe, but one of my favorites, a book about George Washington. I'd even copy my favorite parts on the pieces of wood did you know that George Washington was a friend of men? You're a strange boy, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, but I'm going to be on the penny someday. What's a penny? <laughs> when I was 22 years old, we moved to Illinois, where I met a group known as the Clary's Grove Boys. Think you're better than us? I never said that. Don't be chicken, just show us what you got. Everyone in town knew they were bullies. I didn't like bullies. But I was the new guy. When they challenged me, I didn't have much choice. Today, some may call it a fight, but it was really a wrestling match. Me against their leader, Jack Armstrong. But then the rule was, once you grabbed your opponent, you couldn't break your hold. Wham! But Jack did, so he could grab my leg and send me flying. I wasn't mad I lost. Everyone loses sometimes. What got me upset? He had cheated. You didn't play fair. Maybe you want to fight us all. Then seconds, they all surrounded me. They were waiting for me to back down or to lose my cool. Instead, calmly and confidently, I told them, I, if I have to, I will fight every single one of you fair and square. They knew I meant it. You're a strange kid, Abraham Lincoln, but you've got guts. You know, I'm going to be on the penny. What's a penny? <laughs> Sometimes the hardest fights don't reveal a winner, but they do reveal character, especially when you're fighting for something you believe in. Still, not every struggle brought a victory. Years later, I saw a group of slaves chained together in a boat on the Ohio River. 
Back then, not all people were free. Some were slaves. Just because of the color of their skin, they were forced to work without pay. They were treated terribly. I never forgot the sight of that boat. I didn't do anything that day, but for years, the memory of those people, it haunted me. I was thinking about them when I became president. I lost four elections before I got the big job. Four. America was facing one of the greatest fights in our history, the Civil War. One side wanted to let the slaves go free. The other side, we want to keep slavery going and we'll fight anyone who says otherwise. If I had turned my head and looked away, I would have avoided the fight. But if I'd learn anything in life, it was this. When someone needed help, I wasn't so good at looking away. I'm sorry, I cannot allow that. What'd you just say? You heard me. These people will be free. The Civil War lasted longer than anyone thought. The fighting took a terrible toll. People on our side were ready to give up. To re-energize them, we held a big event in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The main speaker gave a speech that lasted nearly two hours. I gave a speech that lasted two minutes and used only 271 words. The most important five words I used, all men were created equal. Mm, all men are created equal. Soon after, I helped pass a law that ended slavery in America and freed all those people. Then we ended the Civil War. As a result, we didn't just bring together these United States of America. We proved that this government of the people, by the people, and for the people would be dedicated to freedom and justice. You know, in his speech, he told the crowd that no one would remember what he said at Gettysburg. Wanna bet? In life, strength can take many forms, but there's nothing quite as strong as standing up for someone who needs it. No matter where you're from or how little you have, one thing you can that can never be taken away from you is your voice. When you find something you believe in, use your voice. And when you see injustice, speak louder than you've ever spoken before. When you do, it'll never be forgotten. Look, he's on the penny. <laughs> I am Abraham Lincoln. I will never stop fighting for what's right. And I hope you'll, ne you'll remember that when you speak your mind and speak for others, there's more, no more powerful way to be heard. The end. Here are some things about Abraham Lincoln. He is truly an incredible person and he can say so little and it can be so powerful. Over here, this is where he grew up, a replica of his home, which is very humbling thinking of how incredible he is and that he has his own monument now. Look at that. It's right there. It is an enormous monument and a beautiful place if you ever have a chance to go to Washington, D.C. and see it. Well, friends, I hope you all enjoyed that book about Abraham Lincoln, and I hope that you all have a fantastic President's Day. Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye.